and I Kanda from ACS, and also a fellow member of the Early Career Subcommittee. <laughs> Partners in crime. <laughs> yeah. First and foremost, thanks to Gabe for the opportunity to present on this panel. Uh, as Gabe mentioned, my name is uh, Sai Kanda, and I'm a senior managing editor at the American Chemical Society, or ACS. Uh, I joined ACS in 2016 as a managing editor <coughs> having graduated with a PhD in computational chemistry from University of Texas at Austin and a postdoctoral stint at the University of Delaware. And more recently, I transitioned to my current role as a senior managing editor in 2017. So I'm, I'm very much an early career professional in the industry, still learning the ropes of what's, in the, what's to be learned in the industry. <coughs> At the ACS, I oversee eight journals in the Applied Materials and Physical Chemistry portfolio. All of them combined are actually the, uh, the largest journals in terms of published output at ACS. And I also manage a team of uh, five outstanding PhD scientists who function in their roles as managing and development editors who oversee the peer review process and facilitate the day-to-day -day functioning of the journals. Uh, additionally, I also oversee the uh, strategic oversight of the journals that I manage, making sure that the content that is published in the journals is uh, on par with uh, the research uh, landscape that's constantly evolving. In terms of uh, what are the most exciting aspects on the job, I think there's a common theme that I've been hearing from all our panel members so far is uh, the first and foremost, the model at ACS is such that all the editors and editorial advisory board members are active researchers and professors at universities. So working on the job actually provides a unique access and an opportunity to collaborate with these top scientists who are, who are at the forefront of the research disciplines. Just to give you a very crazy example, as an undergrad, uh, I had this textbook on quantum mechanics uh, written by two very famous scientists. And fast forward a decade, uh, that per one of the authors in the textbook is uh, an editor-in-chief of one of the journals that I manage. And I actually talked with him on, on the phone and on email every single day. And I look back, man, that's crazy <laughs> like that, that I get to work with this uh, incredibly famous person in the field. And uh, it's it's really humbling experience to, uh, to be working on this job. And also, I'm incredibly fortunate to work with fantastic colleagues at ACS. Uh, who span diverse areas of uh, backgrounds and, and publishing experience. And I think last but not the least, uh, working on the job also gives a sense of satisfaction in being able to contribute whatever little I can to both the scientific communities and as well as the publishing communities. In terms of challenges, uh, the, the two points that, that you see on the slide, that is uh, managing journal growth and handling communications with a very uh, big board of editors, almost 100 editors, is a direct consequence of the portfolio that I oversee at ACS. As I mentioned, I actually oversee uh, the largest portfolio in terms of uh, published output. Uh, but I should note that these are actually good challenges to have because it, if anything, it indicates that the journals are having, are seeing a healthy growth in uh, areas of research that are really hot in the field right now. And the third challenge uh, is actually a consequence of my uh, change in roles and responsibilities at ACS itself. And I think this is uh, probably a challenge that I love addressing the most uh, because it gives me an opportunity to adapt on the job as I get new roles and responsibilities and, and to learn new skill sets and, and progress in my uh, career development. I would like to leave you with a parting note, and I think this is again a common theme that we have heard from a lot of panel members is that uh, publishing career was never on the cards when I was doing my PhD and thinking about the future. In fact, I was more uh, keen on getting a corporate R&D position in industry, uh, but I'm happy that circumstances kind of made me think about publishing opportunities, and uh, now that I see one side, well, I saw one side of the coin as an author and reviewer, and now I see the second side of the coin as being a publisher, and I see the benefits of working in the industry. I kind of may have made it a point to talk to early career PhDs and postdocs that I come across uh, during my conference travels to inform them about the benefits and ad advantages of actually thinking about alternate careers, even though I actually say that academia is an alternate career because of the number of people that graduate with a PhD and ultimately end up in academia is such a small percentage that I think we should call academia as an alternate career right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope there are no professors here in this room. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, I've made it a point to talk to people about uh, publishing career opportunities. And I think to that end, uh, serving on the SSP Early Career Subcommittee has been a fantastic experience, an exper experience that I share with Gabe, Kristen, and a couple more uh, happy faces in the crowd. So thank you. Um.